will talk about the last escape from shaitan. What's the last escape from shaitan? Is that when shaitan gets you into a sin and you lose all control? I'll share with you one tactic that will help you rescue yourself in the last minute and save yourself from falling into that sin. So what is this technique? It's about when you fall into the traps of shaitan, shaitan seems to get you into a position that is ideal for you to fall into a sin. So all the ingredients of the sin are there and then <clears throat> you're so tempted to fall into that sin and you lose control. You don't, you don't seem to have any control over yourself to give it up or, or withdraw from the situation or get out of the whole thing. So you just feel drawn into just like a black hole sucking you in and you seem that you're inevitably falling into that sin, okay? So this is the last resort into how to get yourself out of this helpless situation. It is something that I call obstinate withdrawal, obstinate withdrawal. And this technique has proven so practical and beneficial to myself and many of the people that, people that I've shared it with. So this is why I want to share it with you in this video. I've used it in some of in many of my seminars and we tried to apply it. And the feedback I got from the students who attended these seminars was phenomenal. This technique seems to be so practical and so powerful and I didn't I didn't invent it I didn't make it up I got it from from Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam that's when the wife of Al-Aziz invited him to commit the the sin of zina the, the way Yusuf alayhi salam dealt with this situation was phenomenal so now let me explain the logic behind this thing and what is obstinate withdrawal basically it's <clears throat> every sin is like a recipe it's like a chemical equation. You need all the ingredients in one place in order for them to interact and react with one another so that they produce the final result, which is in the recipe's analogy, it's the final dish, okay? So if you remove away one of the important or basic ingredients of that recipe, you don't get the dish. And in the chemical equation, if you remove one of the basic ingredients or one of the basic reactants, you're not going to get the final result, which is the chemical product. You're not going to get that. And sin is just is similar to that. So in this sense, shaitan is a chemist. Or shaitan, you can see shaitan as a, as, a as a chef. So shaitan needs all the ingredients in order to make his dish. He needs all the reactants in order to make that chemical equation. And the most important ingredient is actually yourself. Because if you're not here, you can't commit a sin here. Okay, if you're not in a certain uh, place or locality, you cannot commit a sin if you're not there. So you are the basic ingredients. In ingredient and that what shaitan that's what shaitan brings you here to where the sin is where the other ingredients are so you can actually fall into the sin so when Yusuf salam was invited by the wife of al-aziz everything was perfect for, was for that sin so he was there the woman was there and there was this sense of privacy no one she because she blocked or she locked all the doors and she uh, closed all the windows so no one could actually know what was happening and uh, ultimately Yusuf was her servant Yusuf salam was her servant she could command him and order him and he was supposed to obey so it was completely perfect and she was inviting him he was she was just telling him uh, come you know she was inviting him to approach her and fall into this sin of zina and commit zina with her but Yusuf salam straight away said you know I seek refuge in Allah from this and I, I'm not ungrateful to Allah who's been good to me, or I'm not un ungrateful to your husband who has really looked after me and treated me well. Then what did Yusuf salam do? He rushed to the door. He withdrew from the situation obstinately. He did not let himself have any second thoughts about it. He did not let himself contemplate and say, let me see, maybe I can get out of this, or maybe I'll just, you know, just approach her a little bit and not go all the way with that sin. He didn't say any of that. He just closed his mind, closed his thinking process and made his ultimate focus on one thing that's getting out of this place. You're removing the basic ingredient. And that's why I call it obstinate withdrawal. It's like stubborn, adamant withdrawal from the scene of the sin. So once you get out of that scene, you can't commit the sin because you're out of it. The ingredients are not there, okay? So simply you can't commit a sin. So what do you do? Basically, 
once you feel yourself trapped, Shaitan has got you, okay, all the ingredients of this sin are there, including yourself, and you're tempted and you see, you feel that in the black hole of, of sin is sucking you in so powerfully and the pull is so overwhelming and you can't seem to control yourself, all you need to do is just, you know, sort of close that thinking process, you know, halt it. You know, bring it to bring it to a halt where it doesn't you don't think anymore. And all you have to do is just tell yourself, I'm getting out of here. I'm just getting out of here and pull yourself. Just, you know, you could actually start running. You could start running because that's what Yusuf did. He raced to the door and she chased him. So you race to any exit from this locality, from this place, okay? So you just rush out without thinking about anything, without having any second thoughts. Let you whole focus, your whole motivation, your whole, uh, you know, intention be focused on just getting out of this place. Just get out of this place, okay? So this door, just open the door and rush out and just walk, walk, walk distances away from that place without thinking. And just to block your thinking, you can actually start just talking to yourself, repeating certain things. It's like, I'm just out of here, I'm out of here, I'm out of here, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. What that does, it distracts your attention from focusing on the sin and the pull of the sin. And what it also does, it stops you thinking about, you know, maybe, you know, the enjoyment you might get from that sin. So just say, you, bl you block your whole thinking process by saying this and by physically moving out of this, adamantly getting out of that place, and then you can't fall into this sin. And usually what happens with sin, and that's something that I learned from practice and from the feedback that I get usually from people, uh, is that sin has high time, prime time. You know, it's sometimes five minutes, 10 minutes, or maybe an hour. So once you get yourself out of that locality, out of that vicinity where the sin is about to happen, where the other ingredients of the sin are there, you get yourself out of it, okay, for about half an hour, okay, or maybe for about, maybe an hour, okay, maybe sometimes five minutes. You know, your desire by that time has subdued, has taken a dip. So then you don't feel that so much tempted. So you're in your weakest moments, you manage to get yourself out of danger. And now you're in more, in more control after you got out of this vicinity. So that's what I call obstinate withdrawal. Try this with helpless situations. It is so powerful. It has worked perfectly for me. It has worked perfectly for so many people that I know, okay? And it just, pays off. Some people have tried it, but it didn't work out for them. And the reason is they did not practice it. They did not rehearse it at times of ease. As I usually say in my videos, if you notice this, that you need to practice certain things at the times of ease and they will come to your rescue at times of hardship. They will come in handy. So all you need to do is at times of ease, I just, just now, you know, after you just finished this, watching this video, all you need to do is just, I want you to put yourself in the mood of committing a sin where you feel you're tempted and you just, want, you feel the pull and the attraction of the sin and just feel so much attracted. Get yourself in that mood and just abruptly break that flow of the sin. All you need to do, just do what I said, okay? Say, I'm out of here and physically, you know, with all, with all force, Get yourself out of that place, out of that room. Open the door and get out of that room. If you're in a building, get out of that building, okay? If you are in, in a certain place, okay, just in your, in your office or in your bedroom, just get out of that place, okay? That's a rehearsal. It's not a real situation. Do that 10 times and all, you know, by doing this, you hardwire your brain, you know, to, to develop a new habit. And that is basically to break the flow of any temptation you have. So you can do it. So try it 10 times. Maybe tomorrow, try it again. Or in the evening, try it another 10 times and so on and so forth. And you will see it becomes like second nature. It becomes so easy for you to break any kind of flow that you could actually engage in when it comes to sin. And then when you get really in trouble, you, you'll find it easy just to pull yourself out of that place because you've practiced it so much. But if you don't practice it, I don't have any guarantee that this could actually work for you because the pull of this sin might be so powerful that you know, your ability to break from that uh, situation or to get out of that vicinity might not really work out for you, okay? So you need to practice it. This has proved very practical for people, especially young people who are, you know, who are tried with watching porn watching pornography. That has really helped them because they usually do it by themselves. They have usually their device in their hands, their laptop or their smartphone, etc. And they are by themselves in that privacy and they feel the temptation. So what they try to do is actually, okay, throw that device out of their hands or if it's a laptop, just leave it and get out of that place. Just say, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. Or just say to yourself, I don't want to commit a sin. I don't want to commit a sin. I don't want to commit a sin. 
You know, I fear Allah, I fear Allah, I fear Allah. Just keep saying this because you block your thinking process and, and you just physically get out of that place. And maybe you could find some friend to spend some time with or someone to talk with, okay, talk to, okay? So get that prime time to fade away and then you'll be in good position to control yourself. If you do that a few times, you'll actually break from the, uh, the, the sense of addiction to sin. If you do that a few times and then inshallah, you'll be able to break from that pool of the sin for good. So hopefully you found this beneficial and if you did, please share it with, other, with your friends, with your family and create that positive ripple effect. So hopefully it will help save more people from the temptation of shaitan, from the tricks and traps of shaitan. It's a very simple advice, but as I said, you need to practice it at times of ease. So it comes in handy at times of hardship when you truly need it. Okay. If you found this uh, video beneficial, don't forget to press the like button, share it as I said with everyone you can, everyone you think who could benefit from it. And until we meet with another video, I leave you in peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A few days ago, a hospital worker from New York was found dead after suffering from a heart attack whilst watching pornography on his laptop at work. The 48-year-old man who was unnamed was found by a shock co-worker who found him slumped in his chair whilst the pornographic video continued playing in the background.